Hey, happy Sunday, it's Margaret. Um, this week's topic is C for closet. Is that the right way? I think so. Um, I didn't think I had a lot to say about this subject. Surprise, surprise. Um, but I actually do. So the first thing is I want to know how the LGBTQ element OP closet got to be like the only one you have to come out of. I mean, aren't there a lot of other things that are varying parts of our identity that we have to tell people sometimes like I'm a Cubs fan or I have tattoos and piercings in places you can't see or you know other things that aren't physically apparent maybe um, I don't know maybe I just don't think your letter of the alphabet is uh, is that integral to your identity although I've realized that some people do sorry my crazy ass cat is sitting here next to me attacking my hands while I'm recording this video. So if I <laughs> flinch or, or freak out or anything, it's because I'm being mauled. Um, okay, my second point is in response to Chesley's video, and I, I know I already did a video in response to that. <laughs> okay, she just fell off. <laughs> and now she's gonna attack my feet. Um, Chesley's video um, regarding being in a relationship and wanting to be in a relationship when you come out. And I think that this is um, unique to her situation and the situation that I'm in with regards to kind of our identity and how relationships kind of solidify that for some people. So for bisexuals specifically, um, a lot of people don't don't value that as a, as an actual label. A lot of people think it's just a phase from you know one point to another. I happen to disagree with that. So I think it's perfectly valid if you tell somebody you're bisexual, whether you're in a relationship or not. You don't need to be with somebody of one gender or another to to back that up. Um, and I think also having a a partner or a you know whatever you want to call them kind of proves to people what your label is. Does that make sense? So um, I think in last week's video or another video or something, I, I referenced my boyfriend. So um, depending on the audience that I'm in, people assume one thing or another based on me using that term, boyfriend specifically. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later. So I can understand the, um, the kind of thought that you need or should be in a relationship when maybe coming out for the first time, but I, I don't think it's necessary, necessarily. Um, okay, coming out without a label. So I don't identify with a label. So when people ask me, well, how do you identify? And frankly, they do more often than you might think. Um, I, I can't say, oh, I'm fill in the blank. Um, so that kind of makes things a little bit trickier, I think, maybe for people that don't really claim one specific label. And I think some of the ways that you can get around that is by just saying you don't, which is what my answer often is, um, or referencing maybe partners that you've had in the past, whether they've been um, one gender or another, um, or you know, knowing your audience, I think too is important. It's maybe not the best time for you to be coming out um, at the conference that we were at a couple of weekends ago, somebody asked one of the keynote speakers, you know, everyone assumes that just because you're in the LGBTQ community, you should be an advocate for that community and you should be an activist. And they said, you know, when you're in a, in a particular situation, which happened to be a sporting event, how can you educate your peers in that moment about maybe some language that they might use that might be offensive? And he said, you know, maybe that's not the best time. A sporting event is a very, you know, high intensity situation and maybe, um, you know, educating people about the LGBTQ community shouldn't be done in that situation, which is not to say that it shouldn't be done ever to those people. But does that make sense? So maybe, you know, coming out in terms of making a statement and, and making and challenging somebody's thoughts and, and um, opinions depends on, on your audience and your comfort level specifically. Okay, the final thing, sorry, I'm like really hot for some reason. Um, mm, so when I come out to people, I have to also out my partner in the process, which is sometimes okay and it's sometimes not. And luckily I've been with my partner long enough to know when, when those 
um, different cases are, but my boyfriend is trans, so um, some people know that. Some people will never know that. Some people assume that. Some people, even after you tell them that, don't believe it. Um, so when I explain to people that my partner is trans, that makes them look at me in a totally different light. So they're trying to peg me, you know, well, were you a lesbian that, um, you know, is struggling with this now, or were you a straight girl and now this is what you want, you know? Um, and I don't have an answer for any of those people and I, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't go along with any of those assumptions ever. Um, but that is a part of, of kind of my coming out process at any time is telling people that my partner is trans. And that kind of opens the door to educating people about the trans community, which I value. But again, you have to know your audience and you have to know why. Why, why should I be coming out right now? Why should I be outing my partner right now? Is it going to do anybody um, a service? Or am I just making the situation something it doesn't need to be? Um, okay, so I think that's all that I have. I hope this video was, uh, was slightly coherent and, uh, and able to be followed. But have a good rest of your week, and I will see you next Sunday.